Good morning, welcome to today's video. I'm in a van with Kevin from Villia, and in the back of this van, there's something very special. I can't it's see it, actually. No, it's a, it's a very, very large box. <laughs> it's just a cardboard box. Yeah, thanks for bringing me a massive cardboard <laughs> box. Just trying to find a location to show you. There it is. Cardboard finish, fully taped, Villia tape, obviously, signature yeah. tape. A lot of technology in this box, taking a lot of work to get to this stage. In addition to the box. A blanket. We got a blanket. Oh yeah. There we go, the Villia Turbinate. So this is one of the demo ones that very kindly you guys are lending to me for a couple of months. I've got to ride it fast. It's the only way to ride it. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't do anything else. That is a, that's a mean machine, isn't it? So Villio were first famous for sort of doing the twin blade. No one had done that sort of design before. Well, the twin blade was quite, it was where Villio really engaged with some, some advanced aerodynamics. And uh, the, the twin blade was, was done you know, for the Lamprey team and in collaboration with the Lamprey team as a, you know, a, a pro tour, grand tour bike. And, and, and the whole premise of it was, obviously it has to be aerodynamically efficient. But the other side of it is a, a, a bike like that for, for world tour, um, and Grand Tour time trials, they're quite long and sometimes they're, they're quite technical with descents on them so it has to handle. It's not enough just to have an aerodynamic bike, it has to handle well as well. And that was the whole ethos of the, of the Twin Blade project. So that's where the, uh, the Turbine, that's where its heart is, but obviously it's been brought bang up to date with all the developments in uh, modern you know, bike components and technology. There are four pillars really to the design of the, of the Turbine and the first one was obviously aerodynamics because it's, it's a time trial bike and secondly was was braking efficiency because that's that's been a bit of an achilles heel in the past of certainly of, of time trial stroke triathlon bikes and now we have disc technology so that's that's a lot easier to address i actually know a little bit about this bike because i made that video with Villia at the factory the second ever disc brake tt bike to be approved by the uci see i didn't know that you know that i didn't know, no, that. No, I didn't know that i'm gonna take your job it's looking pretty neat um way smaller rotors than on my road bike, which I guess is understandable because you're not going to be doing anything as quite as technical. It's interesting with the with the disc brakes because they, in terms of aerodynamics, they do allow for the placement of the the stays and the fork blades to be further out from the from the spinning wheels. And this is something that was established with with the twin blade. Up until the twin blade, really, at that time, because twin blade is quite old now. It's like five or six years ago. Um, People used to reduce frontal area and make bikes as narrow and as tight as possible. And then with the work they did in, in the wind tunnel, Villia realized that actually, in terms of the spinning wheels and the relationship between the wheels and, uh, and the airflow between the fork blades, especially, and the spinning wheels, it's better if they were spaced further out. Yeah. And that's quite established now. You see that with a, with a lot of um, manufacturers. So, so you see that, that kind of explains the big gap in here. The air will go through there in a, in a much cleaner and more linear fashion. And the disc brakes allow you to do that more easily because you don't have to accommodate the, you know, the brake mountings like you used to with a, with a caliper brake. Aerodynamics is paramount with this and you'll see every single surface has been um, you know, addressed. It's designed like all the Villia aero bikes with extensive use of CFD, computational flow dynamics, which allow is software programs which allow you to get very, very to accurately pred predict actually the, uh, the, the drag factors and, and the behavior of the air around structures and you can get pretty close it's what all the formula one teams use there are two kind of principles involved there's the whole NACA algorithm thing and NACA NACA was the forerunner of, of NASA and way back in the 50s they established some algorithms for aerofoil sections for aerofoil efficiency and and that's what Villier have used on you know on this and the other aero bites in the range those algorithms work very very well but because it's, um, these structures are on a, on a bicycle, they have to work within the, the UCI constraints and they have to be light as well. So that's why we use the truncated aerofoil, the cantail sections, which is another well-established aerodynamic principle. Comes what does that 50. mean? If we look at this as a good example, the ideal aerofoil section for this would, would continue down probably to a point about here. Yeah. But obviously that, that's going to be heavy and the UCI wouldn't allow it anyway. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you truncate the aerofoil, but the air still continues pretty much on the same path so you get the same benefits of efficiency, but you, you, you lose the weight because you've cut part of the aerofoil off. And also, if you're a bike designer, it helps to, to uh, make this stiffer as well. Just the, the geometry of that section will inherently make it stiffer. Mm. But you can see the, those principles everywhere. If you look at the head tube, that's one extended NACA profile with, with the cantail technology there. If, if you consider that the air is attacking this tube in this direction, you can see that again, 
it's, it's seeing a, a NACA idealized uh, aerofoil section, then you've got the truncated aerofoil there. So every, every single surface on here is, um, has received some attention from, the, from the, the CFD. Obviously there are constraints with the UCI, which is why these, these chain stays are at the, the height they are, because the UCI won't let them be any lower. Integration is the other thing. You can see that there are pretty much no cables presented to the wind here everything is inside the frame it's super clean and it, aesthetically it's, it's nice anyway but yeah. also um yeah, it's not it's not a bad looking bike no it's not <laughs> there's a couple of things with this bar the the base bar is actually designed by villia they incorporated this this folding function into that i'm gonna say this i haven't actually done it myself yet but you can actually dismantle this handlebar in, in less than one minute it, these two portions come apart the same that side all the cables and the hydraulic hoses stay connected but you can fold them down and in that uh, condition, you can actually get it inside a conventional normal bike box. And then when you get to your destination in your hotel room, within one a minute, minute <laughs> within one minute, but I haven't done it myself, I've got to say that, um, you can put it back and you haven't changed anything according to your position. You yeah, haven't yeah, disconnected yeah. brakes, you haven't got to bleed anything. How do I know if this is comfortable or not? Don't well, know. I guess it's, yes. it's a kind of suck it and see thing. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> done, bike fit done. <laughs> this has got an inline seat post on it, but there is a minus 23 setback, so a conventional one. And it's also, which is not UCI compliant, but there's a plus 65 mil um, for, for triathletes as well. But hopefully, uh, you can get away with that one. Yeah, yeah, you want to be quite far forward. That's what we've it? given you. <laughs> what have you got in mind then? Uh, well, I'm racing with it with tomorrow this? night. Tomorrow night? Yeah, <laughs> and it's only a local 10. <laughs> but I, I, I'm going to try and fit it as best I can today and see what happens. Um, maybe bang the power meter on it tomorrow and see. I borrowed a pointy hat from Met as well. Yeah, you've got to have a pointy hat. Yeah, you've got to have a pointy hat. Yeah, yeah, otherwise there's no point turning up. My boss, George, beat me in a TT by five seconds. Five seconds. And he was on his TT setup. I was on my road setup. I'm not, that can't happen. So I'm going to make some adjustments to this, get it rideable. I need to charge it because it's DI2. I believe this is a demo bike that's been sat in the shop for quite a while. Got Mavic 80mm deeps, profile design handlebars, Dura shifters, Altegra drivetrain, San Marco saddle, slightly wide at the front so you can sit right at the tip of it. Integrated seat post. Also running Mavic tyres. I remember years ago they had a bit of a bad reputation but that was a few years ago. All in all, can't wait to give this a ride.